Hello everyone. A week before Christmas, two little brothers happened to stay at their grandmother's house. One night, when it was time to go to bed, as usual, they both knelt down to say their prayers. While the elder boy was saying his prayers quietly, the younger one was saying his prayers aloud. He prayed, Dear Lord, I know you are so good and kind to children. Each year during a birthday I receive gifts, but I do not like any of them. And raising his voice even louder, he said, Please, Lord, this year ask Santa Claus not to bring chocolates and biscuits, but bring me a hoverboard. His older brother leaned over, nudged his brother and said, Why are you shouting your prayers? God is not deaf. The little brother replied, I know God is not deaf, but our grandma is. Friends, our God is not deaf. God spoke to the Israelites through the prophets often in various ways. He heard their cries for mercy and delivered them from all their distress and afflictions. And yet they continued to worship other gods and disobey God. Finally, he took on human form in the person of Jesus, and through his ministry, death and resurrection redeemed the whole of humankind from sin and death. God continues to speak to us in many different ways, especially through his word. And he always hears our prayers, but unfortunately we do not always heed his warnings and advice. Speaking of human blindness and deafness, the prophet Isaiah says, the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is ear too dull to hear. But your guilty deeds have made a gulf between you and your God. Your sins have made him hide his face from you, so as not to hear you. Since your hands are stained with blood and your finger is guilt, your lips utter lies, your tongues murmur wickedness. Friends, in today's Gospel, we are once again warned to listen to his voice before it may be too late for us. Friends, today marks the start of your new church year and the first day of the season of Advent. And also from today on, we start reading the Gospel of Matthew until the Feast of Christ the King next year. The word Advent, meaning coming or arrival, is derived from the Latin word Adventus, which is a translation of the Greek word parousia, used to refer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the season of Advent is a time to prepare us for both the birth of Christ or the first coming of Christ over 2000 years ago in Bethlehem and his second coming as a powerful king and judge of the living and the dead. Friends, in today's Gospel, Jesus speaks about his second coming and warns us that most of us won't be ready when he arrives, and he compares it to the time of Noah. He said, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Many times while addressing the crowd, Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man. What was it like in the days of Noah? From the book of Genesis, we learn that Noah had lived 4,000 years before the time of Jesus, and the people during his time were wicked. All day long, the deepest thoughts were nothing but evil. They had become so exceedingly wicked that God even regretted having made human beings on earth and was grieved at heart, and he wanted to destroy the people in a flood. But one man, Noah, found favor in God's sight because he was a righteous and blameless man of his generation. God commanded Noah to build a boat which would be a refuge for him, his family, and many animals so that they could escape the flood. As Noah was building the boat, God gave people 100 years more to live until one day, following instructions from God, Noah entered the ark with his family and animals of every kind, after which there was lightning, thunder, violent shaking of the earth and floods. The people fled to the mountains, but no one could escape from God's wrath. 
It was too late. The time of salvation had passed. God had shut the door. Hundreds of thousands and or millions were killed because of their great wickedness and only eight of the people were saved. Friends, however, when Jesus talked about his second coming, he did not emphasize people's wicked behavior before the flood. He did not say that they were getting drunk or having wild parties. He only mentioned the normal activities of life. He said that the people were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Was it wrong to eat and marry? Of course not, because God had made man and woman and blessed them with all the good things of life, particularly the power of procreation. But they did those things without recognizing the Lord or listening to Him. They lived as if they knew nothing about God or there was no God. They walked in the stubbornness of an evil will until it was too late to escape the flood. Jesus then warned his listeners, So it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. That is to say, Jesus will come to judge people at any time even while they are busy with whatever they are doing in this world. He further compared himself to a thief in the night and urged people to keep watch because no one knows when he would come. Friends, what is the message for us? Today, we are once again called upon to live a holy life. Be watchful and consciously aware of the sudden and unexpected return of Jesus Christ. But from time to time, we are so caught up in the things of this world that we too might be a little unprepared for his return. We continue in our pursuit of worldly power, glory and possessions despite the warnings from the scriptures of the impermanence of our life on earth. In the midst of these earthly pursuits, we often forget about God and His sudden unexpected return, even when things seem to be going well. Friends, your Christian is someone who is always preparing, always watchful, always ready for the moment when everything stops and we see our Lord Jesus Christ face to face. Hence, while we continue to do all the things we normally do, we shall also invest ourselves in godly activities and values such as kindness, generosity, humility, patience, love, self-control and other such Christ-like attitudes and characteristics. And we shall always truly love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength and all our mind and love our neighbor as ourselves so that as Jesus says, when we do this, we will live and we will be found ready to enter into God's presence when He returns in glory. Amen. God bless you.